Good evening, Knights. Welcome class of 2025 to Wheaton High School. We are so excited to have you come to Wheaton High School next year. My name is Lisa Gerhardt and I'm the Academies and Application Coordinator here at Wheaton. Tonight, we wanna to talk to you a little bit about all of the AP classes and the AP and the options during the summer to help prepare for those classes. I'm joined here with Ms. Salvato and she'll be here in just a minute. Both of our contact information is here in case you have any questions afterwards that we didn't answer, please feel free to reach out to either one of us. All right, so we have three courses that our ninth graders can take that are AP courses. The first one is AP Computer Science Principles. And we, um, all of our students who are in our AOIT pathway, our Academy of Information Technology, our computer science program, they take that as their first course. This course is an AP course, but it is um, a great course for students. They get a survey of all things computer science related. We also ask that all of our Wheaton Edison cybersecurity students take this in the ninth grade as well. Could other students take it? Sure, you may take it as an elective. We also offer AP Physics 1, and this is a requirement for all of our engineering magnet students. Our biomedical magnet students can choose in and choose to take this class, and that's fine. If you love math and science and physics, then by all means, challenge yourself and take this class. Can other ninth graders take this class? Absolutely. It would replace the honors biology that you're currently signed up for in the ninth grade. Our third course that we offer for freshmen is AP US History. This course is suggested for anyone who is in the biomedical program, our magnet program for biomedical students, but is not taking AP Physics. So you see the way it works is that we ask you to take one AP class if you're in the magnet program, whether it's AP Physics 1 or AP US History. Can other students take AP US History? Absolutely. When students and parents ask me, should I take AP US History? I could respond with two questions. Can I catch you on the weekend reading a book? Do you love reading so much that you will just read, read, read? And do you love history? If you're somebody who loves history and loves reading, absolutely take this course. We have amazing teachers that you'll hear from later tonight that are teaching this course and have taught it for many, many years. So how can you find out what you've signed up for? When you look in Parent View, on the left-hand column, you'll see this menu. You wanna click on Course Request, and you will be able to see the courses that you have signed up for and requested from your counselor. You'll be able to see what we call it in terms of the course ID number and also the course name. So by all means, you should check that out in Student View and in Parent View to make sure that the courses you are signed up for are the correct courses. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Salvato, who's going to join me, and she is going to talk a little bit more about AP. Hi, and again, welcome to Wheaton High School and welcome to Challenging Yourself to Advanced Placement Courses. I wanted to give a little bit more information about the benefits of AP and provide you a little bit more about each course. First, kids who finish AP courses oftentimes show that they're more prepared for the rigorous college work. They build great study habits and improve their writing skills simultaneously. They're definitely more likely to choose challenging majors and are more likely to exercise leadership. Research also shows that they're twice as likely to go into advanced study. What does the score mean? That's something that oftentimes parents and students are very interested in. We do provide the AP exams in person in May in a normal setting. This, of course, last year was a little bit of a bizarre setting with COVID and us being out of school. But next year, we expect regular testing to occur in May. Each AP score is out of a five-point scale, being five extremely qualified going down to one not qualified. Colleges look at three and above, really focusing their attention on fours and fives, meaning that you have definitely understood the material. An AP grade of three or higher does qualify you for college credit. Every school looks at them differently. What do you do when AP can be overwhelming? A lot of kids get nervous about it, and many of our freshmen take more than one AP course. So just like Ms. Gerhardt spoke about before, there are three options. Selecting one is a great opportunity. 
if you choose two, you need to go into it knowing that you might need some follow-up. So what supports are in place? Obviously, all of our courses are on MCPS Canvas. We provide in-house lunchtime supports every day. Saturday school provided for support in a lot of after-school courses that are allowed and in, in accepted and challenged for students during the school year. There's multiple avenues for homework and classwork. There's many textbook, online resources, and outside sources as well as our grading and reporting policies are definitely there to benefit the student. And we provide mentorship for the National Honor Society. What do we need from you, the parent? Well, we definitely need you to continue to offer support to your sons and daughters, making sure they devote enough time to reading and studying that course. That there's a place in your home that provides a spot for no distractions, a quiet daily study area. If it's hard to do in your house, try and pick an hour or two that the student would be able to focus solely on their AP work. Your kids need stress relief and encouragement. A lot of times parents think, oh, it's not middle school anymore, I should let them have some more independence. And absolutely that is the case in high school, but they're still 14 and 15 years old. They still need you to let them know it's gonna be okay, you're fine, challenge is good, let's solve this problem. They need you to do that for them. If you could continue to be a support for lifetime learning. Many of us in the job world continue to get more credits or go back to school. Students need to know that the love for learning is something they need to hold on to. And lastly, and extremely important, is that you monitor through Parent View their assignment completion and the quality of their assignments, making sure that they know every time they put their name on something, it needs to be their best work. 2022 exam dates haven't been put out by the College Board, but are expected usually the first two weeks of May. There are two summer opportunities for students in AP. One is for AP US History, in the same weeks, but in the afternoon, AP Physics 1 students can attend. We did them on the same days, morning to afternoon, because some students do take both, both courses simultaneously. Again, we provided our contact information here at the bottom. Please know that we are providing an office hour Zoom on June the 11th. There was a letter sent to each student electronically that is signed up currently for an AP course, which introduced not only this information, but gave you the link for the office hours. If you have any questions at all about AP, coming to summer supports, registration, you should feel comfortable writing either Ms. Gerhardt or myself, and we'll be happy to respond or come to office hours. Again, we're really excited that you're joining us this year at Wheaton High School. We cannot wait to introduce you and welcome you to our building. Hi, APCSP students and families. Uh, my name is Ms. Dunbar, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our ninth grade Advanced Placement Computer Science Principles. Ms. McLeod and I are super excited to meet you next year, and there's a couple things that we want to let you know so that you can get ready for APCSP. Um, you'll see in the top right corner, there's a Google Classroom code. Um, this is an optional Google Classroom that you can join. There are summer enrichment opportunities posted as well as some other information to help you get in the APCSP frame of mind. Um, first things first, I also want to welcome you to the Academy of Information Technology. Most likely, if you are signed up for AP Computer Science Principles, you are also a member of our Academy, which is amazing and awesome and means that for the next four years, we hope that you'll be exploring computer science and one of the two pathways that's on your screen. So in your freshman year, you complete AP Computer Science Principles, and then when you move on um, for your second year, you can choose between the programming pathway or the website development pathway. All right, so Computer Science Principles, or CSP, is a full year course. Um, 
It is a rigorous course, but it's also meant to be an entry level course to introduce high school students to the foundations of modern computing. We cover a broad range of topics in our course. So programming, algorithms, the internet, big data, digital pr privacy and security, and then also the societal impacts of computing. And you'll see this list one more time. Okay, so once again, we focus on the fundamentals in our class. So if you've never taken computer science before, this will be a great place to start. If you have already been engaging in computer science through coursework within your school or summer camps or just your own personal interests, you'll find our class really um, deepens your understanding and challenges you um, to add and broaden your experiences in computer science. We are not solely a programming class, although we do spend about two thirds of our class programming. We also get into um, a lot of other aspects of computer science. Our goal is to make sure that you have a super strong foundation to build on as you continue to pursue computer science. We also know that computer science connects to so many other STEM fields. Um, and so we believe that by exposing you to all of these multiple aspects of computing, um, you'll be able to see those connections yourself and they will serve you better in your future. When it comes to our AP exam, um, ours is unique. So I wanna tell you a couple of things about that before we go on so that you're prepared. Um, our exam is made up of two parts. The first part is an in-class project. So we actually set aside about 14 hours of class time. And no, it's not all 14 hours in a row. We spread it out over three or four weeks. Um, and each time you come into the class period, you actually work or make progress towards your completed project. Um, when you're done with that project, you package it up and you submit it to the College Board. We also have a traditional end of year multiple choice exam that we'll take in the spring along with all of the other um, AP exams in the AP exam schedule. Um, so that two part um, type of exam is unique and we walk you through it and we make sure you're prepared to complete both parts of the exam. One of the other things that's unique about our class is how we learn. Um, it's not a traditional computer science class, so if you're picturing that you're going to be sitting by yourself programming, um, that is not it. In APCSP, we have a lot of fun. Um, we have a variety of activities and online lessons that we engage in. Um, sometimes we're not even using the computer at all to meet our objectives. Um, we have a good mixture of projects, assignments, and activities. Um, all of those ask you to be creative and they're gonna ask you to express yourself and then share your creations with others. Almost every lesson is going to ask you to communicate. It's gonna ask you to communicate your ideas and communicate what you've created in some way, shape, or form. We also do keep a journal along the way, um, an electronic journal of our new learning. It's a place where you will capture your reflections, um, resources that you don't want to forget, and even content and notes that you want to make sure you have as you continue throughout the year. Ms. McLeod and I plan for a lot of support for you all as you move through the year. Um, first of all, we, we will use online classrooms, so whether it's um, Google Classroom or Canvas, all of your work and resources are always posted electronically, so you have access to those in class and outside of class. We also offer lunch support, and you can come to see either of us. So if I'm busy, you can go see Miss McLeod and then vice versa. Um, but we're there for you at lunch if you need anything or just want to stop by. We also have an after school support session where you can come in and um, get help from either a teacher or actually another academy student. So a lot of our students that finished CSP, um, they like to come back and help um, students who are currently working in CSP. So that happens after school. Um, and we always post the days and times where you're welcome to come in. We also set, have some optional summer enrichment activities that I'm gonna take you through in just a moment. Um, and those activities, Again, they're not required, um, but they are great just to make sure you're prepared and you're ready to hit the ground running when you come to APCSP in the fall. Um, these are some of the optional activities and these are all going to be listed in the Google Classroom that you can join using the code on the top right of your screen. 
Um, the first thing we recommend, and this is especially important if you have never programmed before, um, and that's to use an online programming practice. And we have several posted. Um, all of them are just the basics, simple programming, just to get your um, get yourself going and get comfortable before the year starts. We also suggest that you keep your eyes and ears out for current events that are somehow impacted by computing. Um, it's all around you, so take a look. And as you read an article, think about where does computing come into play? We also have something called the Cyber Start Game. The Cyber Start Game is um, mainly focused in cybersecurity, but there's also a little bit of programming there. It's a self-paced game. It's just made up of increasingly difficult challenges that you have to solve. There are some resources within the game to help you. Um, it's divided into um, cyber forensics, Python, and then a little bit of just cybersecurity. So um, if you do decide you want to do that, there'll be instructions on how to log into that game in the Google Classroom. And then the last thing I will post to the Google Classroom is an online book called Blown to Bits. Um, it's available for free online as a PDF. Um, so you are welcome to take your time with that and read that over the summer if you're a reader and that's something you're interested in. It also gets you in the APCSP frame of mind. Okay, and if you have any questions at all, uh, my email address is there on the screen. I can be reached by email. Um, we can't wait to meet you all. We're so excited that you're taking APCSP next year um, and we hope you have a great summer. Thank you. Hi, welcome everyone to AP Physics One. I'm super excited. I'm super glad that you all decided to join us on this course. Um, this course is very rewarding in my opinion. Um, and it's something that really helps with the students to not only just in physics, but also in the, some of their other classes with the critical thinking skills that come along with it. Uh, so as far as this course goes, um, just as a refresher, it's, uh, it is an algebra-based physics course. So that's the highest level of math that uh, there's a very minimum that they'll need. Um, so a lot of it, the calculus stuff that people tend to associate with physics, that's left for AP Physics C. So which is nice because that means this course is more um, open to a wider range of students. Um, even if math is not your strong suit, you should still be able to um, do relatively well in this course because it involves a lot more critical thinking and analysis rather than just the using the math to um, analyze the situations. Uh, there is going to be a little bit different than previous years, maybe what from before that you know about the course because they got rid of units eight through 10, which is the base electricity, circuits, waves, sound, um, which is actually good for us because that means that we can really focus on units one through seven. And then actually gives us a little bit more time to do more of the labs that we always wanted to do in the past, but we were never able to just because trying to fit it all a 10 units in. So that's awesome. Um, and then you can earn college credit depending on what school you are applying to and your AP score. So there is a benefit to taking that AP test and doing well and um, trying to get that success in this class. So you can go into college with uh, some credits under your belt so that way you don't have to take as many classes or you can get out of some gen ed science classes to make it easier on you. Um, so just about to teach you, so I'm Mr. Fo. Um, this is my sixth year teaching, well going to be my sixth year teaching at Wheaton. Um, this coming year, mom's gonna be teaching honors physics and human body systems in our uh, bioscience academy. I got my bachelor's of science and physics from University of Maryland College Park. And then I immediately went to Stevenson University to get my Master of, Art, of Arts in teaching. Um, outside of school, I enjoy playing and coaching volleyball. I coach high school and club volleyball. Um, I do love going on hikes. My current favorite hike is going out into the uh, Shenandoah uh, region. And then uh, almost anything car related is also uh, one of my interests uh, outside of school. So. Uh, Mr. Bates is going to be the other AP Physics 1 teacher. He's going into his eighth year. Um, 
He uh, also teaches the, uh, in the math department. He teaches multivariable and vector calculus. And he also teaches in the engineering academy, um, specifically the aerospace engineering course. Um, he got his BS in physics from MIT. And he also worked on uncrewed helicopters at Boeing and cooked professionally in restaurants in LA and DC. He's cooked some amazing dishes that are super tasty. Um, he has a master's in education from the University of Maryland and is his spare time. Uh, he enjoys difficult puzzles, cooking elaborate meals, and playing Magic the Gathering and other complicated games with his kids. So we're going to be the two teachers. Um, so you're going to have one of us um, for this course. Now, as far as the summer assignment goes, uh, we're going to post it on the Google Classroom. So you can either join by going to this link. Um, but Obviously, it's going to be might be a little bit hard to type that in. So if you just go to Google Classroom, you can join using that code uh, listed there. It is case sensitive, so be aware of that. So it is E K three I F E H. So again, you can just go join using that Google Classroom code or click in the link. Uh, the assignment assignment will be posted on the classroom soon, uh, so that way you can go ahead and work on and complete it. You do not have to turn it in on Google Classroom. It will be collected at the beginning of the school year with um, either me or Mr. Bates, depending on who you have. So you don't have to worry about, you know, submitting and figuring out how to submit it onto there. Um, so no worries there, but it will be posted soon. Um, and you just go on access, you can make a copy of it and then um, fill it out on the Google Doc itself. Uh, we also have the summer jump program. So um, we know high school is offering a ton of different summer programs um, as well as the county. So AP Physics 1 will be holding one of our own. Um, it is going to be June 21st through 25th from 1 to 3 p.m. each day. So you get two hours together for that week. And really what we're trying to do with this summer drum program is to go over some of these skills that you may, uh, that you'll need for this course um, and give you a head start with learning them and then also applying them. Um, so we're going to try to do some sample labs where you can kind of practice them um, in order to, as his name suggests, get a jump on the next school year. Um, so these links below are posted because again, it's kind of hard to um, type it in and is, may not be able to click it. So if you just join that Google Classroom for the summer AP1, then you can just go ahead and click the links there. But there's going to be a link with a list of all the summer programs that are being offered. Um, and you can just find that AP Physics one on there to get more information and a short description. And then the uh, registration link is a Google form with that link there. Just make sure you select the AP Physics one, fill it out. So that way you can get signed up and um, join us for that week to get a head start for the school year. Now, as far as support, this is one of the things that people are always worried about, um, especially with more and more um, underclassmen wanting to take this course. It's just about, you know, what supports are there to help your uh, child succeed? And so just going to us. So because both of us teach AP Physics 1, and we've basically teach the go through the same pace, same use the same resources, and use the same notes, we would, um, regardless of who you have for your teacher, you can go to either of the teachers for help. So, you know, my students can go to Mr. Bates, and Mr. Bates students can come to me with whoever's available just to get extra help. Uh, lunch support, so we're usually available during lunch um, if we're in person for next year. And then there also is a Saturday school program, which will be, have the info released usually at the beginning of the school year. Um, so it is an optional outside of the school um, program where you know you can come in on Saturdays to get help with uh, AP teachers. And there's also the Science NHS and NHS usually has tutoring services. Um, obviously with the pandemic this past year is not as um, large, but they usually do hold some tutoring. So that is available. There's also, we do post quite a few um, YouTube videos and other online resources um, from other teachers um, that also help to give the students another viewpoint 
And then also we do a lot of optional extra practice. Then we also use those as well. Like that there's Abit.io, which is a um, resource that we pay for with a lot of good practice problems. We also use the workbook provided by College Board and things like that. So there's a lot of different things out there. So that way you never feel like it's, you don't have support or practice or ways to succeed within the class. So again, I hope you guys all sign up to join us at the Summer Drum program. Um, so again, just make sure you join these Google Classrooms for the Summer AP Physics 1. Um, we'll kind of post updates if we need to, and you can always ask questions as well. So here is our contact information. So there's my email and Mr. Bates's email. Um, in addition, there will be a Zoom office hours for incoming ninth grade AP. Um, so the link is there, but there's also the meeting ID and passcode if you just join using the Zoom. So um, either Mr. Bates and or I will be there um, to help answer any questions you may have regarding this course. But again, we, I look forward to seeing all of you and I hope you all are able to join us for the Summer Jump program. Hello, future AP US History students and parents and guardians. My name is Lauren Zolkowitz. And I'm Bart Brooks. And we will be your AP US History teachers next school year. So what is learned in AP US History? Um, we learn everything. Your student has already, if they were in a Montgomery County Public School, they've already taken the first half of US History but we go back to that first half and we go way more in depth than they had been before. And we go all the way up to roughly 2010. So there's a lot of information that we go over throughout the year. We start with pre-Columbian societies um, and by the exam in May, we will finish up with roughly 2008, 2010. So what do we do in class? So um, while there's a lot of factual information, it's also a very skill focused course. So we do lots of uh, primary source analysis, secondary source analysis. Uh, kids will be looking at charts and graphs and paintings and pictures. Uh, there will be lecture, but there's also a big part of it that's um, kids collaborating together uh, and using um, reading resources that they have from their textbook and online readings. So why? Are you in this class? Why should you be taking AP US History? So first of all, AP US History allows students to take a course equal to that, to US History 101, that is a required course um, in colleges. Um, so most degrees require general education courses and US History 101 is one of them. So this course can potentially replace that course in college. Um, it prepares you for AP, um, future AP courses in high school. If your student is in an AP course um, starting their freshman year, it is very likely that they will continue being in AP courses throughout their high school career. This is the difference between AP US History and Honors US History. AP US History, um, at, in May, you take an extensive exam um, in which the score is out of five. If you get a three, four, or five in the exam, you could potentially not have to take US History 101 in college which would save a tremendous amount of money. Um, it all depends on what college you go to or um, what score they would accept as a replacement. For example, University of Maryland accepts fours and fives. Um, Frostburg State or Salisbury State accepts three, fours, and fives. Um, but it's a very, very extensive course that definitely prepares you for future AP courses and the bonus of possibly getting college credit. Every student that takes the course is expected to take the exam in May of 2022. We don't have the date just yet. Um, and we can very confidently say that we prepare your students very well for this exam. Uh, just to follow up on the, a little bit on what uh, Ms. Zolkitz was saying, we were just talking to uh, former students the other day uh, that had taken APUS and one that had not taken APUS. And she was saying, oh, people are always saying in my AP classes, this is just like what we did in AP US. And she's like, I didn't take AP US. <laughs> so it really helps prepare you for the rest of your uh, Wheaton experience. So can't recommend it enough. Um, we understand that it's going to be challenging 
Um, and we there, there are a number of big challenges that they'll be facing, but we try and make it very structured uh, so that there's a lot of supports. So there will be a calendar that they will receive weekly and they'll typically provide it both physically and online so that you can access it. Uh, it will list out what the homework assignments are and you should expect that people will have homework assignments pretty much every day. Uh, there will be study group assignments that they do that are, you, we want them to meet with their study groups about once a week. Um, in terms of the kind of assignments, there'll be writing assignments, document-based writing assignments. Um, there'll be weekly multiple choice quizzes um, and um, short answers, which are like really, really brief writing assignments. Yeah, one thing that we can say is this class definitely teaches your students how to write an essay. Uh, we are very structured with how we teach thesis writing, contextualization, um, essay management, essay organization. And so the students come out of the class very prepared for essay writing, uh, well above their peers who are not in AP US history. So we understand that this um, class can be very overwhelming. Your student is coming from an um, eighth grade student um, that they might have found eighth grade very easy to a college level class. It's quite a far jump. Um, so, but um, we have to remind you that although this test is normally taken, the AP exam is normally taken by 11th and 12th graders throughout the nation, we offered in ninth grade. And at first when I was given the chance to teach it, I was quite concerned about that. But every single year we surpass the national average of, um, of AP scores um, and our students do quite well on the exam. Um, but we understand that this can be challenging. So we do have lunchtime support every day in this room 2001 and then Mr. Brooks's room for next year as well, which we will announce next year. Uh, it's pretty much open. We don't have lives. We sit at our desks. We help students. It really helps them get through some of the assignments. We have different avenues for how to do homework. We offer two online textbooks as well as two um, hardcover books as well that can help them. Any format of a homework assignment can be redone for a higher grade. So if your student didn't do well in assignment, they can get help and redo the assignment for a higher grade. Tests and quizzes can be quite challenging because they are college level. Uh, the language can be tough. The documents can be tough. So we do allow test corrections, which we um, gladly lead the students through, and they can earn anywhere between 10 to 20 percent back on the grade. Um, we also offer upperclassmen mentors, some National Honor Society mentors, some students, upperclassmen students who have already taken this class and got a three, four, five on the exam, and they can lead them through, meet with them once a week to help them through assignments. And on top of all that, we also have Wednesday after school sessions every Wednesday from the very beginning of the school year all the way to the exam um, from 2.45 to roughly 4 o'clock, 4.15. And just to uh, follow up, everything Ms. Solkowitz mentioned is free of charge. Okay, uh, one of the things you saw there was not only are we trying to provide support for uh, our kids, but we also want to make them involved with other kids to provide support. Uh, being invested in the school is tremendously important for children's motivation to be successful. So I know we're asking you to do a lot for this class, but getting your kids involved in different aspects of the school, like sports or clubs, uh, is really helpful for them. Uh, the other thing is a lot of the kids that are involved in sports and clubs have already had this class and been successful in it. So it, it helps tie them into a network of support. Uh, and um, we have always had kids that were involved in um, sports and clubs that, we, that were successful. So don't feel like your kid has to just take this class. Uh, they, can, they can be successful in lots of aspects of being a group. Yeah, it definitely helps with time management. We find that when a student has all afternoon to do a homework assignment, they spend, um, all, they afternoon. spend all afternoon on it. They might watch YouTube videos or something else when they're supposed to be doing the assignment. But if they are busy with extracurriculars, if they only have an hour to do an assignment, it only takes them an hour because they are focused um, because they have, they have those time management skills. So I definitely recommend getting involved in sports and clubs. A lot of parents and guardians can be a little bit worried about that because they are afraid that they won't have time with the AP class.
but they will have time and they will learn time management. It ends up helping. So there is a summer assignment. I have actually emailed it to all the students twice now um, with a Google Classroom code for them to join to access the summer assignment. This summer assignment, it's not too extensive, um, but it is due the first week of school. It essentially covers um, some of the early material in which we don't have too much time to cover in class. So it's really important that they get it done and it will count for a grade for next school year. There is also a summer jump Zoom camp <laughs> that uh, will help the students get through the summer assignment, introduce them to some of Wheaton's ideologies um, and things like that. It is June 21st through 25th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and you can register on Google Classroom. So I highly recommend that. It's only a couple hours a day for five days. They can essentially get a lot of the summer assignment done, learn some of the techniques with note writing, you know, meet their teachers and so forth. So um, please encourage your student to join the Google Classroom and to register. If you can't, it's not the end of the world, but it's really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all. And please reach out to us if you have any questions, you can find our emails on the Wheaton website. We will very happily um, respond to any emails that you have with any questions about any part of the class or exam or things like that. And we are very excited to teach our students next school year.